And um, we didn't practice this, but starting over with Pastor Nick, um, we can kind of come down and why don't we just say our name and our age and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> why don't we just say, say our name, introduce yourself. Starting with Nick and moving on down. Pastor Nick here, and I think we're all 29, right? Yeah. That, okay. <laughs> That's me too. <laughs> Phyllis Neither, associate pastor, 28. <laughs> Amber Giles. 15. <laughs> She's been 26 for many years. Doreen Rouse. Julie Smith. Courtney Van Weldon. Austin Van Weldon. And I'm 36, and I look the youngest here, so I know y'all. <laughs> Actually, when I met them, I thought they were like, well, I, I knew kind of how old Austin was because he was in my youth group. But um, for some reason, I have been saying that Amber's 26 for many years. She's keeping her youth. Her, the, her youth is renewed. And Austin and Courtney's youth is renewed, too, because they, um, I thought they were, like, in their early 20s. So they're not. So how could that happen? <laughs> Supernatural. All right. So um, we may not ask all the questions that you want um, to know about. And please feel free to approach any one of us if you have questions and write, you know, write Get ready. Write down some notes. Um, God's going to give some answers and inspire you um, today. And so I'm going to be giving out questions. And then um, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just as we're inspired by the Holy Spirit. Each one of them have received my questions and meditated on and prayed on um, just different areas that they have seen God move. And so um, I'll just be calling on whoever feels like they have an answer for the question that I pose, okay? And then I will just interject whenever I see fit. <laughs> so so here we go. So Father, we just thank you and praise you for this opportunity that we have, Lord, to come together, Lord, and just to learn and grow about your spirit, about your gifts. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for the spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding, counsel, might, spirit of the fear of the Lord. We welcome you. Just inspire us, stir up in us, fill us up today, and, and open our spiritual eyes to see, our ears to hear, our heart to receive all that you have for us, Lord, to walk in. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. Amen. So um, the first question I have, and you know, remember we're not just jumping on the mic, we're raising hands so that because giving other people turns. Um, first question is, um, how can I have? This might be a question you have. How can I have more operations of the gifts of the Spirit in my life? I know it's a very general question, but Austin. Um, I'd say it starts with desire and appetite. You know, uh, you know so it's those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. You know, it's like you ever walk down like Mayfair and then this down like to for the food court and you smell the Cinnabon place, right? You're like shopping, you're just minding your own business. All of a sudden, you get a whiff of something and it's just like, ooh, and all of a sudden, you start to get hungry for something, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is kind of what it is for the gifts. When you when you hang around people that are operating in these types of gifts and love is abounding. You, get, you catch a whiff, an aroma of what God is doing, how much he loves people and what he's willing to do to set them free or to heal them and all these things. All of a sudden, it's like you start to get a hunger for it when you see it and hear it. And so this is kind of how this you know, starting line for operating the gifts is first desire and hunger. And then once you have desire and hunger, you can start to get into the word and prayer to learn more about these things because faith comes by hearing. Once you have that mustard seed of faith, then you begin to watch people and how they operate and how does the word operate and how do they do it in the Bible. And then you start to step out like Peter, step out of the boat, start to operate a little bit and you know, hang around people that are doing these things. And you're just going to continue to just increase that hunger and give you an example to follow, and then you can actually start partaking and doing these things. So That's awesome. I wish you would have told me your answer so I could have had some Cinnabons. <laughs> have a little aroma. Don't we smell good today? <laughs> Pastor Nick. Paul told Timothy, he said in um, 2 Timothy 1.6, stir up the gift. Yeah. And so all of us that have the Holy Spirit, you have spiritual gifts in you. There, God didn't forget any of you out. So you have a spiritual gift, but he said, stir it up. And you know, when you make something that 
is a, in, a combination of ingredients. What happens when you let it sit? It settles to the bottom. And then, when you, and then the color of whatever that is fades out on the rest of the fluid. But when you stir it up, all of a sudden it mixes in, it changes the whole color. And so when you stir up the gifts, then that becomes up to the surface. So again, all of us have gifts in us. It's just how much we're going to stir it up, like Austin was saying. And one of the things that's so important is worship. If you don't have a worshipful life, uh, prayer life, if your prayers are always, you know, Lord, I need this, Lord, I want that, uh, Lord, change this, things like that, which, you know, he listens to, but that's not stirring that up inside of you. But when you get into that worship, it takes you out of focus of yourself and your needs, and it puts you more into his presence and the things that he wants to do. Praise God. Amber? It comes with intimacy with the Father. So adding on the final thing with like what Austin said and what Pastor Nick said is the more you desire to please the Father, the more he desires to have a relationship with us, and it just turns into wanting to please the Father, and it comes all together. I mean, he wants to help people. The gifts are to help people, to help us, to reach out, to go forward. If we love the Father, we have the same heart and same desire as him, so it just kind of all wraps up together. Right, in James 4, 8, it says, draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. And so if you're close to someone, you're going to know what their heart wants. You're going to see what they see. You're going to feel what they feel. Uh, you're going to know their demeanor. And so it really totally, if, I, if you want the gifts of the Spirit, you want to be earnestly desiring them, you're going to be spending time with Jesus. You're going to be spending time in fellowship. Yep. I would say expect, expect God to talk to you. Accept your place as a child of God and that he will communicate with you and he usually does through the gifts of the Spirit and hearing his voice and just expect it. Amen. Um, in 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you're reading his word, you're going to know how he talks. It's so important, like if, if somebody were to pretend to be Clayton, I know you guys all try, you, in, you impersonate, <laughs> but, and you were to call me, and you were to say something that was off the wall, and I know that's normal, but if you were to say something <laughs> that's unusual for Clayton, or we'll just say, if you were real serious to me, <laughs> um, I, because I know him well, because of our relationship, our close relationship, I would know that it wasn't him. So out of studying the word of God and staying in the word of God daily, you will know if something is the Lord. And um, so, yeah. Isn't that good? That was a good answer. All right. That was... Oh, you want to use the mic? Um, just... Clayton always texts me from Jenny's phone, but it's always like about corn dogs and sugar candy <laughs> clouds and stuff like that, so I know it's not Jenny. <laughs> and I get my phone later on, I'm like, mm, sorry, Julie, you know who had my phone. <laughs> okay, question two. Now, everybody's not going to answer every question, just so you know, it's just because we have 15 questions. Um, what are the common mistakes or pitfalls that you have seen when people try to step out into the gifts of the Spirit? Um, I know that you guys have reservations. I know 110% because you've got God, you've got Jesus and the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, that you have the gifts of the Spirit, okay? But many of us are reserved about it or are afraid to step out um, because we're afraid to have error. We're afraid to make a mistake. And so what are some of the common mistakes or pitfalls that you've seen when people try to step out in the gifts of the Spirit, Phyllis? I think the most common mistakes that we make is we forget that the Holy Spirit is the one that leads, guides, and directs us. Amen? You know, he's our comforter. Once we get saved, we don't only just receive, which is eternal life, but we receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But those gifts... They operate based on the Holy Spirit abilities and not our abilities. So when you are allowing the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct you, even Jesus did it. In, in John, I think, John, it says that everything, he, 
Jesus was talking, he said everything that he said or did was by his Father. So if he was led by the Father, the Holy Spirit, we have to be led by the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then another thing, too, that I think, too, is coveting someone else's gift. God has already gave us what we need to build the, help build the church body. I don't need uh, Pastor uh, Nick's gift. I don't need Pastor Jen's gift or Amber gift. God has given me that gift. So what we have to do is seek God and find out what our gift is. And once we do that, then we operate and help together and help build the church together. That's good. Julie. Um, two things. I would say, first of all, discounting yourself at all. Um, like, they, like they said, we all have gifts of the Spirit in us. And discounting yourself, like, and not, just not knowing that it's, we make it a lot harder than it is. Getting a word of knowledge or a word, word of wisdom or any of that is very, it almost feels very normal to you if it's your gift. You know, it just feels like it's just you. It's just me, you know. But really, when you when you speak something out, like say if it's a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, um, it has more like punch to it than just you would, but it feels like you. So just don't discount yourself and trust that, like my mom said, that God is speaking to you. Um, sometimes we're just not listening, <laughs> but he is. He is always speaking to you or he's showing you things or giving you visions and it's just, it really is just going to feel like you a lot of the time. But once you're, you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, you kind of know, okay, that was God. You know, the other, on the other side of it um, would just be careful, I guess be careful to not, like if you hear bits of gossip or something, and then, and then you go in and you, you think it's a gift or, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like you think it's going to, something you're thinking about, a person or something like that is a gift because you heard something about them. So just kind of be careful um, that you're not, you're testing the, you're checking yourself and testing the spirit of behind what you might put out there. If that makes sense. Yeah. So something just to interject real quick is even if I get a word like let's say in the service, I wait on it for a little bit. I'm like Lord. I ask you for, um, you know, proof, or I ask you um, for confirmation on that. And, and if it stays with me, um, or he elaborates and gives me a scripture or two or something like that, then I, then I know that he's on it, and then I'll share it. So I would say don't jump out, like if God is showing you somebody or whatever, don't jump out and assume like, oh, I've got a word for them. Um, hold it in, ask the Lord for confirmation or clarity on it um, so that you don't get into error. Amen. I'm Courtney. I'd like to add, too, if you get, like, a vision or a word for someone, um, another pitfall is adding to the word. Yeah. So if I get an image of, I don't know, a campfire, and that's all I got, only share what you have. If you try to add the interpretation to it that God didn't give you, now you can um, disturb, yes. confuse the person that you're giving it to. That might mean something to them, and God might speak directly to them. Or you can ask God for the interpretation, but if he doesn't give it, don't create interpretation. Yeah, that's really good. That's actually something I had down. Um, so when God shows you or speaks to you something, whether that's a word for your life or someone else's life, never, there's a scripture, I didn't write that down, but don't add to or take away from the word. And really a vision or a dream or a, or a um, you know, prophetic word or whatever, just say what God has said unless he does give you the interpretation, then you can say it. But um, because God will confirm it. If you know it's God and you don't understand it, maybe it's not for your understanding. It's for theirs. And they'll get it, and God will reveal it to them. Pastor Nick? You know, as you get moving into a gift of the Spirit in your life, it gets pretty exciting. And, um, and then you get this zeal. You get this, um, your emotions get more ramped up. And I remember Jesse DePlanis saying something once. He said, that if Satan can't get in front of you and stop you, what he'll try to do is get behind you and push you hmm. so that you get out of sync with the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we have to just keep our emotions and our zeal in check. Um, Zechariah said in Zechariah 4, 6, it's not by, our, it's not by force, it's not by our power or force, but it's by his spirit. So a lot of times we just have to, you know, check things with the Lord first, always check. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if it is you, you'll get the Lord will just kind of wean it down. 
But if it's him, he'll ramp it up. That's really good. Yeah. Um, I actually had kind of that on, on my list here. You can't, so with the gifts of the Spirit, it's as the Spirit wills. So you can't make it happen, and that's essentially what Pastor Nick's saying, is just because of emotions or uh, the, the music is hype or whatever, um, I can come up and exhort. That's not a gift of the Spirit. I mean, I can exhort in the Lord, encourage you in the Lord, and, and, but, but I, I'm not going to give a prophecy because that's not what he's, he hasn't given me a prophecy, but I can exhort because it's as the spirit wills. So if he gives me a word, like I, like I said, I'll sit on it for a minute or two to make sure it's not me that I'm not amped up. You know what I mean? And he'll bring confirmation. And, um, so, and that could be regarding, you know, even in the marketplace or, um, concerning your friends or whatever, if you have a vision of someone before you, um, and you just came from an, a service about the gifts of the spirit, don't just, yes, um, desire the gifts of the spirit and yes, expect God to, um, speak to you and show you things, but don't like go in and be like, okay, I'm going to have a word for this person and that person and this and that. Um, sit on them, write them down, meditate on them, make sure God confirms with you so that you don't um, expect it, but then don't get into error about it. Amber? Um, it also helps to have a really good friend that you bounce every single thing off of. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think adding to and taking away in the pride um, is one thing. But one example I wanted to give is I was asked to help minister on a Friday night. And, you know, I was going through the line and I had like amazing knowledge of stuff going on. But it was as the spirit willed it. And then I came up to one lady and I saw one image of a shopping cart. And it made absolutely no sense to me. And then for me, my fear is fear of failure or fear of getting it wrong and screwing up somebody's life. Because, I mean, a word from God is huge, so we want to take that very seriously. But all God gave me was an image of a shopping cart, so I sat there and I kept trying, as I was praying for her in the spirit, trying to get more as to what to say to this woman, and I didn't get it. So I just opened my eyes and I told her God showed me a, sp a shopping cart, and she broke down and started bawling <laughs> and said that that was everything she needed to hear. So, and I still, to this day, have no idea what God did. But I didn't add to it, and I didn't take away, and God knew little, you know, to me it didn't make any sense, but to her it made sense, and only God knew that. Amen. Hallelujah, and she wasn't giving me the word, so <laughs> God scolded me about shopping, no, <laughs> Who just raised their hand? Austin. Uh, just one last thing, kind of adding to this, uh, another pitfall I see is not asking the Holy Spirit how he wants to do this, you know, again, like not taking or adding away, but also... As far as like, you know, especially in particular to, to healings, you know, when people come up to a healing line or when you're out ministering, you know, a lot of times we try to mimic, you know, it's good to like view and see how Christ did things, other people, but Christ healed people a lot of different ways. You know, we want to try to stick things in a formula and <laughs> make it, why well, that must be that way every time. You know, I've seen when a spirit of God moves, like <laughs> when, I, when I was with another ministry, uh, People, some people would cluck like a chicken. That happened like once, and that may have been by the spirit, but then every time there was a spirit of the move of God, they'd all start clucking like, I'm like people can get stuck in this rut of doing goofy things that are just like, you know, is the spirit showing you to do this right now? So with everything that you do, yeah. have the spirit lead you into it and not try to copy a formula. If he happens to show you to do the same formula that someone else did, sure, go for it, but don't just copy other people. That's good. <laughs> That's a little inside joke. Okay, um, I'm moving on to my third question. Um, is a gift of the Spirit something I have to be willing to step into, or is it automatically going to happen? Julie. Um, okay, yes and no to both, all of that. You, it automatically does happen, but you're not always automatically obedient to do whatever, to speak out whatever it's showing you or to obey whatever, you know, you're getting. Um, but I think that even in seasons of my life where maybe I've not been as close to God as I should have been, God surprised me by speaking to me or to giving me words of wisdom. Um, and it really, honestly, it blessed me. Like, like, God, I'm not even, I haven't really be, even been conversing with you all that much, and you're still speaking to me like this, and that really blessed me, that, that the gifts and callings are without repentance, and they're, I think they're just, they're there automatically, but it's not always automatic what you do about it. Right. Go ahead, Phyllis. 
I agree with Judy 100%. When I was reading this, I was struggling with it, and my answer kept coming back, yes and no. And the reason why is because the Holy Spirit just gave it to me this way. You know, sometimes we struggle with what our gifts are, and we struggle on how, you know, how we're going to use our gifts, and we're thinking and this and that. But uh, God wants us to take the uh, struggle out of it, when we are led by the Holy Spirit, that's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. And I really believe that if the simplest way for me and the way God showed it for me is if you walking in the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, patience, joy, and you're, <laughs> you're putting your hand on whatever it is that God's showing you there's a need. When you're serving, when you're serving with love, when you're doing all of that, I believe that you're going to run right back into your spiritual gift and you're going to be operating in your spiritual gift. You know, it's just like a, a um, hospitality. If someone loves to cook and serve and this and that, they're operating in their gift, you know. If someone loves to just worship God with singing and you find they're in the shower singing all the time, they're worship and praise leaders, you know. So sometimes I think we struggle with what our gifts are and if we're going to, do I step into this one or do I step into that one? But if we're just led and we're walking in the fruit of the Spirit, I think we're going to run right smack into what our spiritual gifts are and we're going to be operating in them. Right. Um, so a gift of the Spirit, it is yes and no. Um, because on one hand, automatically, by as the Spirit wills, he will manifest his gift. He'll show you something, whether it be about something someone's going through or um, to give a word of encouragement or prophecy to someone or whatever. It'll just happen automatically. Now, it's not going to ha that will happen automatically, but the obedience part, the part to say, yes, Lord, I yield to you. I'll step out in faith and I'll release that. That's, that's on you. And so you have to then, so automatically he'll just inspire you or show you but then you have to he's not going to forcefully drag your feet over and tell tell this person and all of a sudden your mouth opens and words come out you have to yield to it you he inspires you he gives you a vision he gives you a word or whatever but then you have to say yes lord i'm obedient and step out in faith yeah. pastor nick one thing that the lord brought to my mind with this question is elijah so here we see elijah operating in the working of miracles, the working of faith, prophetic. I mean, he's having a great time. He's, he's taking down the prophets of Baal. He's calling fire down from heaven. He's outrunning the horse and chariot. Um, you know, he's praying for rain. It starts rain, raining. So, I mean, he's on a roll, right? And all of a sudden, he hears Jezebel's after him. <laughs> and he just flips. He runs away. And, I mean, he, doesn't just, he just runs to the next mountain. And he is hiding. One minute he's operating in all these gifts, the next minute he totally shut down. And so why did that happen? It always puzzled me. But, you know, first of all, Jezebel had a history of killing prophets, so maybe a spirit of fear got in. We don't know for sure. But maybe, maybe he had a rough uh, childhood with his mother. Maybe there was uh, some type of a bondage there. <laughs> we don't know. There might have been a mental block there. You know, there's some people you can connect with and some people you might hit a mental block with. And so there could have been a lot of those factors. And the Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's good. So sometimes you got to find out where your weaknesses are. And if that's a hindrance, then you got to, you know, let you and the Lord work on that and get that out of the way so it doesn't hinder you from moving in the gifts of the spirit. That's good. All right. That's awesome. Um, so, yes, we have to yield by faith as the Holy Spirit shows us. I like that. The spirit's willing He's revealing stuff to us. If we're, if we're staying full of him and, and walking in the, the fruits of the spirit and walking in love, he's going to reveal stuff to you because he wants, he's looking for people to stand in the gap or he's looking for people to be used by him. We're the hands and feet of Jesus here on earth. And so, um, but when he shows us, we want to be obedient. And, and one little other little thing is you want to be obedient when you start manifesting in the gifts of the spirit, when he starts showing you stuff, a very, very important. If you want to be continually used, you better yield and you better say yes because um, 
he'll go look for somebody else yeah. to give that word or, or, you know, someone else to, to share, you know, that word of knowledge or that word of wisdom or whatever. Um, so you want to say yes in obedience so he knows, oh, this is somebody I can count on. So um, another thing, too, is like kind of along the lines of what um, Pastor Nick was saying is Peter stepped out of the boat by faith. And so, yeah, he, the Lord called him. He said, yes, come on and come out on walk to me. <laughs> um, so we know that was the, the operation of the gift of faith and the working of miracles because naturally speaking, he couldn't do that. But thank you, Clayton. <laughs> but, um, you know, he stepped out. He could have just had his reservations been like, no, I'm not able to do this. How could I? And reason is mine. You better get rid of all reasoning and yeah, you can have assurance in your heart or say, Lord, is this you? And get a confirmation or whatever. But you do have to step out in faith. He would have never walked on water, never would have saw that working of miracles had he not stepped out in faith and yielded to what God was doing and what God was saying. Um, okay, number four. How do you know the difference between your own mind and the spirits? Or I could rephrase it. How do you know if a gift of the spirit is your idea or if it's the Spirit of God. Amber. I don't want to do it. That's all it is. I mean, really, it, it's too big for me to comprehend, and I, my heart starts beating really fast, and I don't want to step out and do it. And it's something I normally wouldn't do it, but the word or the, or the action comes with authority, and it's not me, or it comes in different words that I wouldn't normally speak. Um, that's usually how I know it's God. Mom. When God speaks, you usually get the revelation within yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he might say two words to you, and you'll get this whole picture of what he's trying to say to you. Right. Um, so from my experience, if it's God and not in my own mind, and if I'm, cause, because this is how I process it, I'll sit on it, and if it stays... It's God. Sometimes, you know, if it's for a service and he wants me to do it in the service, um, I, I don't automatically jump into it. It's not a lack of faith. It's me making sure this is the Lord and not me being in inspired, you know. Um, I can be inspired by the Holy Spirit, but I'm just confirming. I'm just making sure. Um, but um, as far as sitting on it, like let's just say it's a word for somebody in the church and God shows me to um, anoint someone or promote someone or this or that. That I'm very careful of, and so I will sit on it. I'll sit on it for two, three weeks sometimes just to get that confirmation, yes, this is the Lord. God has, God, and he, he blesses that because he knows the heart of it isn't to be um, disobedient. It's because I don't want to be in error, so I'm going to ask him for confirmation, and he always gives confirmation. And so if it stays for me, then I know it's God. Pastor Nick? You know, when God spoke to the prophet Samuel, he said, go to Jesse's house. I want you to anoint one of his sons to be a king. And on his way there, God spoke a word to him, and he said, man looketh on the outward, but God looketh on the inward. And that was so important for him because he could have anointed the wrong son because of the, the influence and the culture that he was in. A, you usually anoint the firstborn. So he right away, who's your firstborn son? And God said, no, that's not the one. Then the other thing they look at is the outward stature. When he anointed Saul, Saul, the Bible says, was a head and shoulders above the rest. So he was looking for a big boy. And God said, no, this isn't the one. So if it wasn't for that word that God gave him, he might have done the right thing the wrong way. Hmm. And so that just kind of shows me how important it is when you take time to meditate on the word, stay in the word, it does create a better accuracy in you when you're ministering in the gifts. And it helps you to kind of differentiate between something that's influencing your mind or something that's coming from your spirit. That's good. And the way I learned, uh, the first gift um, that started operating in me was tongues and tongues and interpretation. And um, a lot of times, like I said in my teachings, that these gifts... A lot of gifts go together. 
And so, um, and we'll get into what special tongues is and, and interpretation of tongues, but a lot of times when you're praying in the spirit on your own time and um, all of a sudden it changes, there's like a stronger emphasis on it, um, you know like God's saying something special, God's saying something to you. So I'll, I'll pray and I'll say, Lord, what's the interpretation of that? And then he'll give me the interpretation. So that's how I've practiced that. But regardless, the way it started um, operating publicly is um, my dad was the pastor, and all of a sudden, my heart would start beating because I, I, would, I knew I had a tongues. I had it, it, it. God wanted to give something, and my heart would just start beating. And then um, my dad would be the interpreta- interpreter. And so I really didn't even have that pressure to give the interpretation, but you have to know, for instance, if one of you's had a tongues, um, you have to know it's God to have assurance that I'm going to receive the interpretation. <laughs> um, otherwise, if it's not God, then, you know, I'm not going to get the download, you know? And so, um, so with the situation, when it first started happening, my heart would just palpitate, just like Amber was saying, because I didn't want to do it. I was resistant in the sense that somebody else was telling me to do something that I didn't want or feel like doing. Um, But because I so desire to be used by the Lord, um, I would step out in faith and release it and then pray (laughs) that this was the Lord. I knew it was, though, because I didn't want to do it. And so that means God was telling me to do it. And then my dad would give the interpretation. So, so, um, yeah, I believe that that is... um, another way to know that it's not just you, it's the Lord. Okay, moving on. Um, <clears throat> okay, number five. How do you know, and, and we're kind of dabbled on this a little bit, but how do you know if a word that you're given is of God or not of God, Julie? Um, it's one of the main ways is just that it bears witness with you. If you don't know that terminology, it's just like it makes sense to you. You're either seeking God for answers, God's been speaking to you about something, correcting you about something, and it's almost like a confirmation. Um, if it comes out of left field and it's like you're supposed to go to Africa this Saturday then, and you have no idea what they're talking about, then it's probably not from God. But generally speaking, I think it will make sense to you. Like Amber said, the grocery cart. It made sense to her. didn't make sense to Amber. So it's going to make, make some, some kind of sense to you, um, even if you don't want to hear it sometimes. Right, so, um, you know, we're all human, so not to hinder you from giving a word, but like we're instructing you on how to make sure it is God, so that you're not releasing something that's like, is left field. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I'm in agreement that it it will bear witness. Austin? Um, I have a pay attention to the anointing, uh, much like when you recognize the anointing, like on a particular song, when a preacher, like, you just know the presence of God's on something, and then all of a sudden, something happens in the service, you're just like, you know, distraction in the background, like, you know, the spirit just feels quenched in the place. It's like, words can be like that, too. Uh, an example of uh, someone in another church that I was a part of, uh, they would give a word, and a lot of times, it would start off, like, half of it would be anointed, like, oh, yeah, I can feel the authority and the power in the word, and then all of a sudden, it would completely switch, and you'd feel like, oh, this is, like, of the flesh. You'd just instantly feel the difference of, like, knowing God's speaking versus now a man is speaking. So just be mindful of that, I guess. So I think in a situation like that, like, we're all human, and so if we would learn to not add to the word, I think that they maybe stepped over from the spirit and should have only shared from the spirit and then stepped over into the flesh to add to it um, what their mind was processing. But just leave it as what, let God do the explanation. <laughs> Phyllis? Okay. Um, First John 4 and 1 say, test the spirit. It says, and I'm just going to read it. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And then in 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, it's talking about Satan pretending to be an angel of light. So that being said, you know, I believe that when it's truly a prompting from the word of God, first of all, it's going to reflect God's character. Second of all, you know, when you receive, someone receive the prompting of the Holy Spirit, you know, you have to say, does this line up with the word of God? 
you know, it's reflecting God's character. Is it lining up with the word of God? And how do I fit that word into the life, my life at, at that moment? So, you know, God, this is scripture in the Bible, and I can't remember exactly where it's come. He tells us that we know good from evil. So when we're receiving a word from God, we know our spirit bear witness, as Julie said. Our spirit will bear witness with, with that word if it is truly of God. And those are some of the things just thinking, does this reflect God's character? God is good. Is it putting me in bondage? Or is it setting me free? Because, you know, the Bible says who the son set free is free indeed. So if that word is putting you in bondage, is it really of God, you know? And I think as we, you know, once you take that word and you, I really sometimes I've received, as Pastor Austin has said, words that I truly believe that it was spoken based on the situation that I was going through. But what I did was I took it to God. You know, and I prayed and I fast and God showed me, yes, it was a word, but it wasn't necessarily from me. They might have been trying to help you go through this situation, but that word wasn't from me. That was of the flesh. Um, a lot of times Brother Hagen would say um, he's human, so he can miss it. And, you know, so, you know, but we're yielding to the Holy Spirit or you might be yielding to the Holy Spirit. Um, you can miss it, but we're giving you, you know, a process um, to know that you're giving a correct word. Um, but sometimes um, a word may not bear witness immediately. So Brother Hagen would say, put it on a shelf. If it never comes off the shelf, and meaning like it never ends up bearing witness, then fine. But, but at least it's there. Well, you know, that doesn't seem like a bears witness for a now. So either it was the flesh or they, you know, misunderstood what God was saying or whatever, but it just doesn't bear witness with me right now. So I'll just put it on the shelf for later. And, and if it collects dust because God never brings it back up, then, then it was probably not the Lord. Um, but maybe sometimes just put it on the shelf. Don't eliminate it right away because sometimes things have come back up and I'll be like, oh, that was that word, you know. Um, and so just a, just a word to the wise, just to, if you get a word and it doesn't fully bear witness right then, then put it on the shelf. Um, also, like with what Phyllis was saying, it will encourage, it will uplift, um, and it can correct in love, too. So, so even though it might not uplift, if it's correcting, um, and the person usually won't know anything about it because God's not going to use you to, um, in the gifts of the Spirit, typically to correct um, somebody unless it is in love, and so it's not to point a finger. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Nick? When you're um, <clears throat> stepping out in the gifts, especially if it's an area you're not uh, real comfortable with, you're still learning, God works with you on that. And so, you know, if you feel like you have a word for somebody, you can go up to them and say, God just gave me a word for you. And if you say that, you know, that may not necessarily be the right approach because that person may be like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, especially if it's out of a church environment. Let's say you're on the job. And now you're feeling something for somebody. So how do you, how do you minister that? First of all, you've got, you're trying to figure it out yourself to make sure you're, you're hearing right from God. But on the other hand, you want that person to receive what you want to minister to them. So if you're getting a word of knowledge, maybe they need, they've got some type of, of ailment or they need healing in a certain area. Then there's a, you can take a soft approach. You know, just kind of start to feel out a little bit. Hey, have you been struggling with, you know, insomnia? Let's say that's what you're feeling. Or if, have you been feeling like a lot of fear, anxiety, and you're, you know, and, um, and you can kind of work with the Holy Spirit on that. And obviously, if, they're, if you're right in the Spirit, you're going to, they're going to open up. All of a sudden, you're going you're gonna to say something. They're going to be like, yeah, you know, I've really been dealing with this. Or I've really been going through that. And then you can just say, can I pray for you? You know, you know, you haven't said, I heard a word from the Lord, the Lord spoke to me, said you're dealing with this, but you are in the spirit and you're ministering to them. And what happens is you get a little more confidence. Yeah, I heard from God on this. I was picking up on something. But on the other hand, let's say you didn't, well, you didn't put yourself out there as a flake. You kind of left, you know what I mean? Now, when the word of, when the, the working of miracles or the working of faith comes in play, 
it's a different, it's a different, different atmosphere in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because when that was working, Paul and or Peter and John went up to that crippled man. And he was asking for alms. They didn't say, hey, you know, I feel like, you know, the Lord can touch you. I think the Lord can heal you. They said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. And they grabbed him and pulled him up. I mean, you, you got to, you know, there's a whole different authority in ministering that way. And, of course, he, I mean, he got up and the guy hadn't walked. And immediately, bones, everything got strengthened. There was no atrophy. There was no memory loss and muscle. I mean, when you think about it from a, from a muscle standpoint, I mean, a lot happened right then and there. But see, that was in an authority. And that comes, that, you feel that authority. It's coming from inside of you. It's not like, you know, you're working yourself up to get to this point. It's there and it's real. And you know that you know that you know this is how God's going to move. So um, just bring it back to also <laughs> how do you know if a word is for you, if, if, if the word that's being given is, is from the Lord? Um, it's going to line up with Scripture. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 1, um, out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. And so when God gives you a word or gives you a word for someone else, there's going to be scriptural confirmation. Um, it's going to line up with the word of God. Um, so I'm going to move on to number six. What is an example of a word of knowledge or how has God used and how has God used you to minister to someone um, in your life? Anybody? Austin? Uh, someone came up for the ministry team. We were up here and uh, just praying for people. And a lot of times God speaks to me through visions. I'm very visual. I'll visualize something. And he showed me like a circle of like witches or warlocks congregating together and speaking death and putting curses on this person. And so I'd see that vision and I saw the word like witchcraft flash across my eyes. So it's like that's how I hear, I see a lot of times. And so then I knew what to pray for and administer that person. And so that was kind of a, you have to acknowledge what was going on in that situation, why she was feeling this way or something, she was under attack for whatever reason. Good. Anybody else? Uh, example of a word of knowledge? Um, <clears throat> my dad was in a hospital, and it was their 50th wedding anniversary, and he ended up in a hospital. And I was kind of dragging my feet about going up there so soon, and the Lord spoke to me, get up there and get up there now. And that would be a word of knowledge, because when we got up there, we got to, this minute we walked into the room, he says, I don't have much time left. And we got to lead him to the Lord. So it resulted in his salvation. Hallelujah. But I had to obey that. <laughs> it's a word of knowledge. Yeah, I remember when we taught, um, uh, the word of knowledge is about a present situation. And so God's revealing something about now. Julie? Um, it's not, it has to do with me, not necessarily me. But um, our house, previous to the house we got, we are in now. We just bought the summer, past summer. Um, we were in a situation, at, we lived in one of the houses at the old church building, the like, parsonage is there, and you know the church, we had to sell the building, and so we had to find a place to go. Um, we were not in a, a financial situation to buy a house whatsoever. I mean, the bank was going to give us like less than like $80,000 for a house. <laughs> so, and we have six people in our family, and that was just not going to work. Um, and so our, our option was to like, what, look, look for an apartment. You know, we don't know. But I, I was still kind of like looking just to see. I stopped at a house. Um, it was perfect for our family. It was absolutely perfect. I loved the like, the style of it, you know, everything about it. But again, it was like 100,000 over what the bank was willing to give us just because our financial situation was unstable previously, even though my husband had a new job, they weren't looking at the new job They're, They want a you know, history. The guy inside the house, he happened to be a pastor um, at another church, like a men's ministry pastor, and we got to talking. And I told him later on, I emailed him, I said, we love your house, but I don't, I don't know that it's going to work because the bank's just not going to work with us, you know. And he said, you know, he said, I felt like the, the way he said it was the still small spirit of the, uh, the still small spirit speak to me today before you guys got to the house. 
And he told me that the buyers are coming through our house today. He's like, last week we had six families come through. This week we only had you guys come through. He said, I think the house is supposed to be yours. Um, and so I tried another bank. It still couldn't get the loan. I said, I'm real, I, said I, I believe it is too, but I'm sorry. We can't get a loan. And he's like, let me talk to my wife. He came back, offered us the land contract, which until we were able to get financing on our own for two years. Um, and so I started... You know, we started moving forward with it because that was a miracle within itself that he just came and he said, God wants you guys to have this house. We're, you know, So he felt like God was speaking to him on that and we moved forward. And then going, in, going into it, at, towards the like, end of it, I wanted to double check with like, realtors and lawyers just to make sure we were like, doing everything the right way because I don't, I don't know anything about land contracts. And um, the, I had spoken to a few realtors and they're like, you know, he's kind of over asking. And so then I kind of started backing off. Um, I was like, well, I don't want to end up losing money, all this stuff. And my dad calls me up and he's like, Julie, he's like, I, this is God working this out for you. He's like, you need to take this, whether or not he's asked, he might ask a little bit more, but if, if you don't get this in this house, you're not going to get a house because you don't have, you know, we didn't have the means to do it. Um, so then once my dad called me and kind of confirmed that like little hesitancy and fear in me, even though I knew it was God, I let the like natural aspects, like, oh, it's not worth that much money, um, get in the way. But then my dad called me and confirmed that to me that we were supposed to have, have the house. So not only did um, the seller conf- you know, say that God spoke to him, my dad said God spoke to him and said, this is your house, you need to go with it. We ended up going with it, and we were in there, like, what, three years, and sold the house last year and made a ton of money on it. Um, <laughs> so I think it was just all part of the plan. You know, God had us a plan to move us up eventually. Um, but, and that's what we could do right then, and he worked it all out, and it, because he's giving people words of knowledge and speaking it into our life, so. That's awesome. so awesome. awesome. Um, number seven, what is an example of a word of wisdom? How has God used, um, how did God use you to help someone in their life with a word of wisdom? Phyllis? Just a quick testimony. I think most of you have heard it, but... Um, Years ago, 20 plus years ago, Richard was diagnosed with prostate cancer and the doctors had said that he didn't have a whole lot of time to live. And of course, when they tell you something like that, it's just like past the sugar, right? It's no, you know, they don't prepare you. They just say it, you know, and um, along with them saying that, they said this, they said, just prepare everything, get everything together, and just start preparing for his dis- dismise. Amen. So I don't know if Pastor Nick remembers this or not, but when we left that office, I was sitting in a car, and this was a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit said, say to your husband, who report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report of the Lord? And once he dropped that in my spirit, and I spoke that with conviction to Richard, then the Holy Spirit said, now tell him to go to the church. And I said, okay, I don't know if he's going to go to this ch- to the church or not. We was on Mayfair Road. But he went to the church anyway. Pastor Ted was there, but he was busy. And Pastor Nick, you was there. I don't know if you remember this. Pastor Nick was there. God used me for that word of knowledge through the word of God to say to him, who report are you going to believe? Then he told me, tell him to go to the church. I don't know why the Holy, at that time, I didn't know why the Holy Spirit was telling me to go to the church. Because really, I was thinking we need to go home and pray, you know. But the Holy Spirit said, tell him to go to the church. And he went to the church and Pastor Nick was there. I thank God for Pastor Nick because when Richard came back, he said Pastor Nick just ministered to him through the word of God. The gifts, um, the, the word of what God say about our healing, how he died on the cross for our healing, our new covenant that we have. And then I believe he must have told Richard, you must have told Richard, now, meditate on the word of God, read the word of God, get scriptures, tapes, listen to the uh, healing messages, so forth and so on. And that's what we did. That's exactly what we did. 
we was doing that because it wasn't a quick healing. It was a process. Hallelujah. It was for the future. Yeah. And within, I say, one year, he was completely healed because I used the word of knowledge. <laughs> Pastor Nick used the word of wisdom as to how to speak to him. Yes. And then Richard operated in faith. Yeah. And that was 20 plus years ago. I know he don't mind me telling that we was in his 50s. Hallelujah. He's 75 years old wow. now. We didn't prepare for anything. <laughs> we didn't prepare for death. And I know there's times you, when Jesus. God will move you in that area to do certain things to prepare. But the Holy Spirit told me, don't prepare for death. Yep. Just speak life. Amen. Walk in life. And that's what we did. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, anybody else? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> that was so awesome. Does anybody else want to answer that question? We're going to move on quickly since we're running out of time. Um, Doreen? Um, when we first started the church, we were meeting in a hotel room for a couple of years, and a lot of the people that were coming just had a church split, and they were... They come out of one of the churches that wore the little white things on their head. And they invited me to a baby shower. And I was getting ready, and the Spirit of God spoke to me, wear a skirt <laughs> to this baby shower. Normally, I wouldn't do that. And I did. And she saw me at the shower. She was, thank God. I was praying to God that you wear a skirt because, you know, it was that kind of a church that she came out of, so she wanted to leave a good impression. So it's simple, but I don't know, it impressed the people. That's so awesome. Um, so that kind of leads, I think Phyllis's and my mom's was kind of an answer to my next question is, can the gifts of the Spirit be used together? Um, often. They're often used together, like working on miracles um, is often with gift of faith and gifts of healing often with the gift of faith because you're not going to step out on that on your own faith. You're going to step out on God's faith. Um, and then word of knowledge, word of wisdom um, are often together as well as prophecies often paired with word of knowledge or word of wisdom. We're going to skip ahead um, to number nine. What is the difference between the gift of tongues and our prayer language of tongues? Can you give me an example? Well, your prayer language is, you know, something that you're just, you're using in your prayer life. But then there's a time when you can either um, be praying and all of a sudden there's an increase of the anointing where you're almost feeling like you're being elevated higher in the realm of the spirit. And the tongues that's coming out of you is coming out with an authority. Like there's a, there's a, a heavenly direct narrative that's flowing out of your tongues. And you're like, whoa, what was that? Now you can pray for an interpretation or, you know, and God can show you that, but Paul said, though I speak in tongues of men and angels. So he wouldn't say that if that wasn't a possibility. So you, God can use you in something like that to maybe release a divine order, a divine command, if you will, to the angelic host to do certain things. And then some people have operated where they've prayed and they've spoken tongues to a foreigner and that person heard him in their own native language. And I've, I've heard se several testimonies. I've never had it happen to myself, but they wanted to, sh they felt to share something to somebody, but that person didn't know, they didn't know their language. So they just said, I'm going to go up to them and just talk in tongues. And they went up and they talked in tongues, and that person talked back to them in their language. They didn't know what they said, but then they responded by talking in tongues back to them. So they're having a conversation <laughs> in the spirit. They have no clue what they're saying, and that person is understanding exactly what they're saying. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Unless the Spirit of God tells you, Courtney. Yeah. Uh, I had an example to add on to that. We were at one of the revival MKEs on the move, and I was leading worship there, and I began to sing in the Spirit. 
And at the end of the service, multiple people confirmed that I was singing in perfect Spanish. I don't know Spanish whatsoever, but they were able to hear me singing in Spanish, and they said I was just giving glory and praises to the Lord. That's awesome. I love that. Um, okay, so does anybody have an example of a gift of healing or working a miracles in operation in your life or even somebody else's life, like a, like a testimony? Courtney? I have one. I was spending time with the Lord and... He, well, I guess I got a word of knowledge telling him, he, telling me that I should, I guess, let me first tell what was wrong. So I have two piercings in my ear. And when I got the second one back in like middle school, it got like the tissues got all like bumped up. So I could never actually put an earring in it and it would hurt. So it was kind of a useless hole. But I was just spending time with the Lord, not even thinking about my ear or anything. And he gave me a word of knowledge saying like, it's time to take care of that ear um, command it back into shape, command healing into it, and no more pain. So as I was praying that over my ear, by the time I was done, all the tissue disappeared and my ear was normal again. <laughs> That's awesome. Amber? I think it's important to note that there's the gift of healing where it can be a miracle and happen immediately, but then there's also believing God for your healing. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had it where I've prayed for somebody with a cataract and they came back and reported that the doctor could no longer find the cataract. But in my own life with myself and my son, we have walked through healing by believing every day and developing our relationship with the father and trusting in him. So it wasn't instantaneous, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Um, I'm going to move on to the next question if that's okay. Um, just because of time, but how can we earnestly desire a gift that we don't know we have? Um, or how can we know that he even wants to give it? If we're, you know, we're supposed to be desiring after these gifts, how do we know he wants to give it? Austin? Uh, I guess firstly, because the word tells us, uh, faith begins where the will of God is known. So when you're reading the word, the will of God becomes known that these gifts are available for healing is available. All these things become available to you once you start reading them. Uh, you know, God says that we are fully equipped for every good work. Uh, we can do the same works as Christ has done. Uh, he's given us all things pertaining to this life and godliness. The same spirit that did all the works in Christ's ministry is within us, the Holy Spirit. So it's like all these scriptures that just tell us exactly uh, what we're capable of, of, what gifts have been made available to us. Uh, again, you have that kind of faith as a mustard seed. Now grow the faith. Watch videos, listen to testimonies, and watch those operating in the gifts. Read the word. Imagine and daydream about seeing yourself doing the same things. And most of all, let love and compassion uh, help draw these giftings out of you. It's like, yeah, it's good to want to desire these things and to operate in them, but, it's, but really helping people and like seeing people hurt and that compassion, that's what kind of drove Christ to want to, you know, when you know, he saw the multitudes, he was just moved with compassion and then just all this stuff came out of him, right? So that's kind of going to be the essence of how these things are going to work. So just to recap though too, is the Holy Spirit with all his giftings is on the inside of you. So at any given moment, he can manifest any of those giftings. Um, so you just want to desire him. You want to go after him and draw close to him. And that leads me to my next question. If you're earnestly, um, is how can I stay full of the spirit and ready for the Holy Spirit to, to use me? Because that's the perfect position you need to be in is being just stay full of the spirit. How can somebody do that? From your own example, what do you, what do, you do to stay full of the spirit? Amber? Well, I meet with him every morning. I talk to him throughout my day. I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, you stay home, so you have time to spend <laughs> time with God. It's really easier than anybody would think. Um, spending time with God can be driving to your destination and telling God you love him, yeah. asking God for whatever it is that you need, but also thanking him that the answer is already provided for. Even if the answer that you're asking for isn't there, we have a building we can meet in. We have cars we can drive to work. We have work. We have the ability to go to work. There's so many ways that you can spend time with God that aren't literally just sitting on your couch. I mean, we, we want to keep our minds actively full of God all day. You know, your kid comes home from school and they're complaining. Thank God your child is well. They're alive. You have them. 
there's ways to interact with God that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do anything else. In Jude one twenty, he says to stir up the gifts of God, or to to build up and and stir up the spirit within you, and um, and that's by praying in the Holy Spirit. So God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit after you receive Jesus. You can receive the Holy Spirit and then use that prayer language to stir it up, to to keep it not stagnant, basically, to keep it moving, um, and then stay full of the spirit by sowing to the spirit, which is reading the word or talking to the Lord in fellowship, worshiping the Lord. All these things are sowing to the spirit and drawing close to God. Julie. Um, kind of along the same lines is that be in a place in your relationship with God where he's always like, <laughs> he's like the immediate thing you go to. You know, I mean, there, of course, you might hear bad news from one of your kids or you might hear bad news from the doctor or something and your mind might, like, get scared for a minute or whatever. But automatically, when, when that happens to me, even if, like, my kids are acting up, the first thing, I'm like, Jesus, help me. <laughs> Jesus, help me. You know, let Jesus or, and God be the first thing, the Holy Spirit be the first person you interact with under any, almost any circumstance. And it like, gets easier the more you do it. It's just kind of a natural thing. Like, I'm sure with, like, with Amber, you just kind of just do it. You know, it's not like you're thinking, like, oh, I forgot to worship God today. You just, it just is there to do it. And once you get yourself to that place where it's just kind of like God's always right there, so I'm always, like, just kind of conversing with him in whichever way I need to at the moment or whichever way he needs it with me at the moment, then it's just, again, a normal, natural thing. It's not something you even have to try to do, but... Um, Try, you, you might have to work, to work to get to that place where you're reminding yourself, well, I haven't spent time with God today, or I haven't spoken to God today. Um, but once you do, it's just kind of like all the time. Um, Pastor Nick, and then I'm going to move into the, I'm going to answer the next question just so that we can get to our last question. One of our biggest challenges is really just getting our eyes off of ourselves. You know, I'm amazed when I look at the life of Christ when he was going to the cross I mean, if anybody should be thinking about how much pain he's in, how much he's going through, how much he doesn't deserve this, it should be Jesus. But here's a woman weeping, and, she's, and he says, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. He's on the cross bleeding, and he's ministering salvation to a thief. Yeah. <laughs> and so the thing that the devil tries to do a lot of times is fill your day with distractions or disappointments or frustrations so you focus on yourself. And then that shuts down your ability to yield and flow with the Holy Spirit. So when you start to sense all of a sudden this day is getting more frustrating, it's getting more aggravating, there's things going on wrong, that's the enemy trying to throw a smoke screen in front of you to hinder you so you're not ready to move in the Spirit. So when you start feeling those things, attack them right away and just stay focused on the Lord, cast all your cares upon him. He cares for you. He's going to work all things together for your good. And then that way it keeps you free to be able to flow with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So um, you might have a question, if the gifts of the Spirit are not operating in me, does that mean the gifts have ceased or that, you know, I just guess I don't have that? Just keep pursuing after God. Just keep pursuing after him, keep drawing close to him, keep being, having your eyes focused on him. And when he, if you stay full of him, and even you can't make it happen, so if, when you stay full of him, just keep drawing close to him. When he sees fit, he's going to use you. And now just because of this series, I believe you're going to realize when he's using you or when he wants to use you. Um, so just keep drawing close to the Lord. Um, one last question. Um, well, there's two questions here, and I want to quickly reply, so I'm just going to have one person answer each of them, because we want to, the Word of God says, um, and we're going to do this, 2 Timothy 1.6 says, For this reason I remind you to fan the flame of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. Um, if you're hungry and you're thirsty today and you just want those gifts stirred up in you, we're going to um, lay hands on you. <laughs> and stir up those gifts within you. Um, we're going to do that at the end of the service. So if you want those gifts stirred up within you after we take up offering, don't just run out. Come, come up and to, you know, we're all going to be up here. Come up to one of us and just get hands laid on, on you. And um, God's going to stir up those gifts within you. Amen? Okay, so um, number 14. Um, if I'm seen in the Spirit... Um, like I'm seeing a spirit. 
or, or I'm seeing an angel or whatever it might be, if I'm seen in the spirit, how do I know if it's of God's spirit or of the enemy's kingdom? Um, and the, would that be considered discerning of spirits? Amber. Um, I've, seen in, I've seen both sides of this in the spirit realm, and I will say that there's nothing to fear of the enemy's realm. When the enemy's realm comes to you, you know by inward witness that that's not of God. Um, God reveals it to you. I've seen something appear like Jesus, and I knew inwardly that it wasn't Jesus. And when I commanded it to flee, it fled. Um, and same with seeing the angelic realm or whatever God shows you, he reveals to you by the inward witness whether it's of his kingdom or not. And it's not scary when it's not. Yeah, and then it's also going to bear the fruits of the Lord, you know, love, joy, peace, patience. So, like, if I've had a spiritual dream and it seems a little scary, um, sometimes a word of knowledge or a dream can be scary, but it's from the Lord in a sense that uh, it's a warning, you know, but, but the Lord told me to check the fruit of it. Is, is, is the fruit of it, you know, is it giving you fear? Is it giving you worry? Is it giving you anxiety? Or is it just giving you knowledge of what to pray for? Um, so, you know, so God will give you that discernment, and it is a discerning of spirits to see a spirit, um, to see in the spirit. And then number 15, um, what does a vision of, from God look like? Um, maybe an example of some different levels of how a vision can be. And I can take more than one answer. Amber? <laughs> well, you've heard the testimony before that we've seen Jesus, um, how we see each other right now. Um, but also using your imagination necessarily. Um, it's a sanctified imagination. So if I, if I invited you all to picture a cheeseburger right now, could you do it? <laughs> Of course. So that's how a vision works. Only usually it's not prompted by yourself. And sometimes it can be random and you'll get the interpretation um, as you go. Praise the Lord. Um, I got one during Women of Wonder. I had a, like just a picture in my mind of us all like in a circle dancing. I don't know if you remember that, dancing around. And I didn't say anything about it. Um, just because some, you know, sometimes you just kind of question yourself. And I was like, well, if it happens, it happens. And then sure enough, within like 20 minutes or so, Jenny, I don't know if she called us all up, but we were all dancing like in a circle around. And I was like, I just saw that. So. And I think some of that is for our learning too. So that next time when you get that, it's like, well, I better, I can release it because then it's like, you know, or I can share that I saw that. So that's a confirmation of what God's doing. So... Well, praise the Lord. I believe that this has been an incredible series, encouraged by the Lord to stir up the faith in, on the inside of you. Did you receive something during the series or today? Hallelujah. We're going um, to go ahead and take up this morning's tithes and offerings. And then, like I said, um, God showed me um, us stirring up.